about you guys had a rare opportunity the last couple of days to get in consecutive practices, and you had a practice on Friday that you and some of your teammates talked about how, how good it was for the group. Um, how do you see this helping moving into the Utah game? I mean, it's to be seen. Um, obviously, we don't know, but I feel like we had a great, uh, you know, 48 hours on the practice court, got a lot of work in, um, you know, and hopefully we can carry it to tomorrow night. Dave, I mean, sorry, Bill. Le- LeBron, the All-Star break obviously is an opportunity for some reflection and a kind of a final reset probably for the stretch run. How do you, what, what, what would you need to see tomorrow night to go into to that break and to kind of that, that chance to recalibrate with uh, Good feelings about what's left of the season. Uh, that was just a question I'm gonna have to answer tomorrow night after the game. Is there something unifying about just the roster being locked into place and just knowing when you're in the practice room, practice court, or the film room? All right, like these are the guys, one way or another. It, it's gonna be these guys. Um, that's been my mindset for quite a while now, and obviously. You know, obviously other people have had different, you know, thoughts, obviously, because, you know, certain names have been linked to certain people throughout the deadline, things of that nature. So that's human human nature, obviously. But for me, I've always just had – I always, I don't – Dave, no, I don't play fantasy basketball. This is the team that we have. I've always had that same sense since we started. Um, the only thing that's changed is, like, who's in the lineup, you know, because of injuries or COVID or protocols and things of that nature. But um, I haven't – my mind has never varied on – who's here and who will be coming in. Things that I don't play that game. LeBron, um, <clears throat> you said uh, in San Francisco that it was the most connected that you felt with them and that it felt good on the court. Um, can you kind of just elaborate on that feeling um, and kind of, I don't know, how jo- joyless isn't the right word, but like how tough it has been to not have that type of connection? Um, I mean, I mean, it's unfortunate that I had probably one of the worst fourth quarters I had shooting during the time when we was the most connected. <laughs> uh, but I definitely felt the energy. Just the energy was just great. Um, you know, I felt like we was connected throughout that whole game. And, you know, that's a team that's been playing connected basketball all year long. Um, and it shows why they're the number two team in the, in the West. Um, but um, I just felt like we just came out with a lot of um, connectivity that game. And, and the result in us uh, possibly having a big win on the road. Now, the way the season has gone, have you put much thought into how much more can you do? How much more can I do to help this team? I mean, that's always always been my mindset. Sorry to cut you off, but that's always been my mindset, no matter what's going on. Um, I'm always trying to figure out ways I can be better, um, more I, I can be more productive, both on the floor and off the floor for our ball club. And, um, and even going down, you know, to the quote unquote second half of the season, you know, after the break. So. I've always had that mindset. Is there more you can give? I mean, it seems like you give everything you have all the time. Is there more that you can um, give? I mean, I can always give more. How's the knee right now? It's here. <laughs> it's present. <laughs> Maybe not. Is, is there, is there um, it's here. Um, you know, you described when you first were coming back on it, that it's basically around the clock treatment. Is that still the case? Is it just rest that, that's going to get you? back to a better place with it? What's uh, well, it's the same as my ankle uh, when I had the eye ankle sprain last year. Or, yeah, I think that was last year. The only way to be back to full strength is real rest, and I don't have the luxury of having rest. So we have to wait to the off season. Brian? When you look at a team like Utah, they had a bad January. I think they were 4-12 and 12 to start off the month. A couple guys out, obviously. What are you seeing from them lately? Uh, uh, Rudy's back. He's the anchor of their defense. Uh, Donovan is back. Um, after being out, I believe, in uh, concussion protocol. Um, so that's their two all-stars coming back. And uh, and Jordan is playing like the sixth man of the year like he's been doing. You know, you, when you have a great point guard in Mike Conley and you have Bagdanovich who shoots the hell out of the ball and also does other things, other facets. And um, I believe uh, their bench has been also stepping up to Hassan, played some great uh, games while, while Rudy was out. And, uh, you know, Satana's been connected for the last few years. They, they've had pretty much the same roster um, throughout the course of the season or their, or their, you know, their big guns throughout the course of the last few years. And obviously uh, with Joe gone, but they've been together for the last few years in the shows. Will you entertain a couple of Super Bowl questions real quick? Um, yeah, of course. 
as a sort of an adopted Angelino, what was it like to, to be there for the Rams to see Dre and Snoop and um, Tams and, you know, like all that stuff? What was it like to be, to be in the building with that? Um, well, I was, <laughs> I'm a Browns fan. Um, but I'm also a guy who roots for a team where I'm in the same city of as well. So when I was in Miami, obviously I wanted the Browns to win. I was a Cowboys fan back then, but we always rooted for the Marlins. We rooted for the Dolphins. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, the city feels better when the hometown teams is winning. I went to a Miami Hurricanes game just out, out of support. That's what, I think that's, you know, sometimes what you just do, um, just for the better of the city and everybody. So, but I was there mostly um, on the football side for Odell. I mean, that's my little brother. Um, and I've tried to be through, be down for him and be for, be with him and give him any sense of uh, motivation and advice throughout the years. And um, to see him win the Super Bowl was uh, was amazing. I also got some other friends on the team too, but Odell was the, the biggest one out of out of out of that. But I'm extremely happy for for McVay and and uh, for Aaron Donald. Big fan of Aaron Donald, Von Miller, uh, and Jalen Ramsey and Cooper Cup. So um, that was big time. Uh, second part is just being a part of. The Super Bowl, uh, for me as a kid growing up, um, the Super Bowl and Christmas kind of went hand in hand for me as far as excitement. Um, I couldn't sleep the night before Christmas when I was a kid, and I couldn't sleep the night before the Super Bowl. So um, for me to be in L.A. and they're hosting that SoFi and me having a, a suite over there, um, to be able to go and take my friends and family and us celebrate the Super Bowl was, was phenomenal. Um, to the Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, 50 Cent, Kendrick, Mary J, um, that we saw. Um, there was a time where the NFL wouldn't even allow rap music to be played inside arenas or hip hop music to be played inside arenas. And obviously, I know we've had black artists, you know, you've had Prince and Beyonce, you know, Whitney Houston, things of that nature. But to have a performance like that where black hip hop artists was performing at the Super Bowl, um, I had a, 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 a moment of like, chills, um, a moment of like um, like a Black Panther, the, the movie feeling. Um, I had a, a proud moment to be there and to seeing hip hop being represented at the highest spectacle of any sport um, or any, I mean, you have like the Super Bowl, you have Coachella, you have like game seven of the NBA finals, you have like the Kentucky Derby, you have certain things, you have the national, you know, national football, well, before the, the four teams, but like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, football national championship. There's certain spectacles, and if you're able to get on that platform, it just, it's pretty amazing. So to have hip hop dominate the Super Bowl um, was pretty awesome. And it only made it right that Snoop and Dre did that in LA. It, it only made it right. So, and also don't forget about Jay Z's influence as well, mm -hmm. to be able to bring something like that together. Um, it was pretty awesome. And, um, you know, to drink Lobos all day was... <laughs> Is that a tequila brand? I haven't heard of it. You haven't? Um, you can go on my Instagram where you guys usually follow me at it. <laughs> to drink Lobos all day from 12 to 12 was, uh, was the icing on the cake. Good day. Yeah. Was the Lobos good? good, good for the huh? Day. Was it pretty good? Yeah, it was great. Okay. It's phenomenal. <laughs> LeBron, you had that tweet yesterday that the Dodgers, Lakers, Rams, yeah. the joint parade, uh, and, and we asked Frank about that, and he said there's a real void for him. Obviously, you've been through parades before. You know what that experience is. I mean, the, when when the Rams kind of go through L.A. tomorrow, what are, what are you going to be thinking about in terms of – Oh, how amazing that is and how great it is for the city. You know, the fans that will be out there, and um, you know, with their you know blue and yellow on and things of that nature represented and showing – their love for the accomplishment that the Rams just had. Um, that'd probably be my only thought, to be completely honest. Now, now I got to think about maybe what you guys missed with, with this city. No, I already know what we missed. You know, I already know what we missed. But more, more importantly, I, I feel like bad for my teammates who won their first championship and what they missed. You know, obviously getting the ring the following year and things of that nature. Some of the guys that came back after you know they went to different teams and came back and got their ring, but the the parade is like. It's really a combination of everything. You get this. You really get to rejoice and and, and and like celebrate with the fans, like in a more intimate setting. So, you know, I feel bad for like my teammates who didn't get an opportunity to have that feeling. I I I, 
I've done it three times. Did you sense any traction on your tweet about the Lakers, Rams, Dodgers? Triple team uh, to be honest, when I send out, I don't really track my tractions. When I send out stuff, I don't. I, I kind of just let it float in the metaverse, I guess. I just let it do its thing, you know. I don't even track. I don't track my tweets or things of that nature. Somebody will have to bring it to me and let me know. Uh, I got a couple questions. So uh, back to you. got a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, well, so go ahead. So back in 2016, when you went to the World Series, you talked to us about like your sports bucket list. Mm -hmm. Wanted to go to major events. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess now Super Bowl's off the list. I've been to a Super Bowl before. What was the other one you went to? Jacksonville. I went. I was in Jacksonville when uh, T.O. came back from ankle oh. during when they played the Eagles. I mean, when they played oh, the Patriots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was there. Okay, but are there other ones that, that stand out where you'd still like to, to go? Um, like back then you said Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. In Monaco. Is that in Monaco, correct? I would love to do that. Um, um, the Super Bowl was literally, this Super Bowl was a little bit different, though, obviously, from the one in Jacksonville. I mean, I had zero ties to any team. Um, I had never been to Jacksonville before. I was just there um, to be a part of the spectacle and enjoy a good time. But, like, this one just felt so much bigger, um, also obviously, with the halftime show and me being where I am in my life today. And my, like my son was with me. Uh, Bryce went to the game with me. My wife was with me. All my friends, you seen all my guys, Maverick, Rich, and Randy, they were all there. Um, so, like, I mean, it was just a, it's a different feeling, um, you know. So, I, I don't know. I don't know any at the top of my head, like, things I want to I wanna go to. That 17-year-old dude was with you. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, uh, yeah he was there. He was there. The, he was in a different suite, though. <laughs> the concept of that, well, one, is that, was that like a replica of what your bedroom?